Hey y'all, welcome back to Brave Kids Art Club. My name is Brad and we are gonna draw yet another awesome animal. I know I call these animals awesome, but they really are. And this one is a really unique animal that I think you're gonna like to draw. It's at least gonna be fun to color. So let me give you some hints and let's see if you can guess what animal it is. Okay, there's some really big green ones of these. They have some long tails. They have spikes on their head and down their back. They like the water, they're really fast swimmers, and sometimes they can change colors. Did you think of what it is? Anybody? Okay, we're gonna be drawing an iguana today. Now, iguanas are really, really cool, really big lizards, and they got a lot of fun little things that we can draw. Now, it is gonna be a little bit more difficult than the other ones that we've done, but I'm gonna make sure that I go slow so we can do it. And I know you can do it because I've seen the tigers and owls that you guys have already illustrated and they're awesome. I've seen some rainbow tigers, I've seen some ligers. You guys know how to use your imagination so I am super excited to see what you guys come up with for this iguana. Before I keep going, remember if you wanna get updates on these every day so that you remember when these classes are, Make sure that you subscribe and then hit the little bell button so that it tells you every time that these classes go live and you'll have a new video and you can start drawing with me again. I would love that because I love drawing with you guys. All right, so let's do our art supplies check. Do we have everything we need? Do we have a pencil? That's preferably sharpened. Uh, do we have an eraser? Maybe you have it on the back of your pencil. We need a marker or a pen so that we can draw some nice solid lines. And then we need something to color with. Now you can do that with your, I'm doing markers. You can do it with colored pencils, crayons, watercolors, whatever you'd like to do. Oh, and you, really important, you need to have a piece of paper. All right, so you guys ready to go? What's the first thing we need to start doing? That's right, we need to start sketching. So let's start with a nice sketch because we need to compose our illustration. Composing means we need to organize and make sure everything fits on the page. Now we have a few different pieces on this, so it's gonna be really important that we, we make sure our sketch is really good because we have lots of little parts here. Okay, so an iguana's body. Let's start with his body. I might move this sideways, actually. Here we go, let's move it this way. Let's do it horizontal. That means it's on its side. This will be a lot better because these are long lizards. Let's start with an oval. I feel like we always start with ovals. <laughs> all the other ones that we've done so far have all been ovals. But that's, a lot of the shapes of bodies and things like that are ovals. It's an organic shape. Okay, big oval right there. That looks pretty good. I'm not sure if I have enough room. Do I have enough room? I might have to, maybe I have to shorten that a little bit. That's okay, we can shorten that. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit better. I gotta leave room for a tail. Okay, so let's draw a circle. How about a circle right over here? And a pretty big circle. Let's do that. If you need help drawing circles, go get like a go get like a cup or something like that, or a cap, depending on how big you're making this, and you can just trace all the way around it. So we got the head, we got the body. This doesn't really look like an iguana. If you've ever seen an iguana, this doesn't look like it quite yet, but it will, you'll see. Let's start drawing the tail real quick. That might help us see what this is. I'm gonna draw this out here. This tail's gonna kinda go down. And you can do whatever you want with the tail. They have really long tails, so you can have fun. You can curl it all the way up like a chameleon. You can, you can do whatever you want. I'm just gonna have his little tail come right over here because I like how it's composed on the page. I like how it fits on the page. Okay, so I'm gonna do another, let's do one more oval right over here for his big hind legs, his back legs. Let's do this. And we'll just try to fit it right here on the edge of this other oval, right here in the corner of this other oval. That might be pretty big. I might have to go a little bit smaller. Now you'll notice on this one, I'm doing a lot of erasing even now, and that's okay. This is where we're trying to figure out exactly what we wanna do. Okay, so we have a circle here, an oval, and a little oval inside of it. Right here at the bottom where this one meets, let's kinda make that tail come off of there. Now it kinda gets thinner. That's the cool thing about tails is they get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. There you go. All the way down to the end. They have long tails. They actually whip these tails at enemies. Anything that they want to keep away from them, they'll smack them with that tail. It's a big, long, strong tail. 
All right, so we got to do another little one right up here for his arm. Do another oval over there, and now we got to start connecting some of these some of these shapes. So a lot of times I'll draw the shapes first, and then I'll start trying to connect them to build my my actual shape of the animal or whatever I want to draw. So let's put a line over here. Let's put just a vertical line that means up and down. That's going to be his nose. And then we're going to try to bring this and just do kind of a straight line over here. And then we'll do a little bit of a straight line over here. He might even be able to make that a little bit bigger. Let's see. Yeah. And we'll see. We'll clean this up after we get the pin. The back here needs to connect to the head. So we're just going to make this, the back of this head is going to kind of go down so he has a neck. And it goes up like that. So just a little curve. And then this one right here, we're going to draw a circle right where this circle, in the corner of this other circle where his head is. We're going to draw a big circle right here. And I'm going to, this is kind of cool, learning about what that is on their body. They have these big jowls. That's right here on your cheeks. These big jowls, they have these big circles right there, little like balls on the sides. And those actually store fat. And so if they ever go hungry, they can act, their body can actually eat the, the fat from those jowls and it makes it so they're not hungry and it feeds their body. That's pretty sweet. Their bodies can do that. And then right here underneath, we'll kind of do a half a circle and then do another one kind of go right under here, just a big half circle. This is called the dewlap. Now, iguanas have dewlaps. These things hang down. They don't always hang down that far, but we're going to draw it because it looks cool. But usually they'll keep them up here, but when they drop down, a lot of times that helps them regulate. That means like control their temperature if they're too hot or too cold. And then it also, it can communicate and it can like talk with other iguanas. Okay. So we got that going on, and we'll have to fix this a little bit as we go. And then the body, you now you can, you can just keep it like that if you'd like. Now let's draw a line right over here. Now we're gonna draw just this little curved line right here, and it's gonna match with this little corner where the tail meets the body. That's gonna be its leg all folded up, its back leg. And then it has really big, really long toes. We'll put these really long toes out here. Maybe we'll even have them come out a little bit more over here. There you go. See his big long toes? And then he'll also have, let's do little triangles right here for his arms. Do a triangle there. And let's do another triangle right there. They have much bigger back legs than their front legs, or I guess their little arms. Okay, is this getting closer? It feels like it's getting closer. And then we'll draw, maybe we'll draw an eyeball over here so we know what we're doing. <laughs> this is where the eye is going to be. We'll have them looking out over here. Maybe we'll give him a little smiley, little smiley grin here on his face. Oh, we gotta draw these little little claws here, his little feet. So he's got it looks like let's do like three and then one that goes back. So we got one little L's. They look like little L shapes. One that goes back. There we go. Okay, and then we'll add some spikes to the top and we'll clean these up. Make those look even better when we put the pin down. They gradually get smaller. As they go back down his back, they get a little smaller, smaller, smaller. And what? This looks kind of weird still, so we're going to have to fix that up. And let's do that right now. Let's do that with the pen. So now that we've got our sketch, it's always nice and satisfying to take a nice dark color and draw the outline. All right. So this is where we get to fix up some of the problems that we ran into when we were sketching. So. Now we get to add more of the body shape, more of the outside of this to make it feel like it's an iguana. The outside lines are called contour lines. That's what make up whatever the shape of something is. Let's start with the back here. 
I'm going to start just right here because I know this is going to curve, but I need to kind of make sure the back of this iguana kind of curves in. So I might cut it in a little bit sooner and then bring it up. And then I want to make sure he's got the top of his head. It's very obvious. And then we'll come down, almost like a straight line down here. But when I do, I'm going to cut it a little bit short. I think I had the nose a little long. I'm going to round it off at the edge. And then I'm going to round it off over here. And then I'm going to put that straight line right back here right here on their jowls. Let's do a big circle right there. And then we gotta draw the back of the jaw. So if you feel in your own face, open your mouth, put your hand right here underneath your chin, and open your mouth, you'll feel it right in here. Mine's covered by a beard, so you can't see mine. But you'll feel it right here. There's a difference between the neck and your face where your jaw is. So that's what we're drawing. We're gonna draw this part. I'm just gonna give it kind of a little, S shape, a little squiggly shape, and you can do it however you want. Just maybe even just do a half circle just to see. That way we know where the head starts and where the body starts. <laughs> they don't look like they're all one piece. All right, then we're gonna do a little smiley face. Or more like a grin, a little smirk. I should say a smirk. And then we got a circle for the eye. They have really cool eyes. They can see really, really well actually. Okay, and then we're going to draw the pupil, which is the center of the eye. And then maybe a little nostril, a little nose. All right, now I'm going to draw that dewlap, that thing right there on the bottom of their neck hanging down. It's kind of like a turkey. You know the turkeys have those? Um, not the same thing, but they have the little things that hang down, kind of like a turkey. I'm going to make mine, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make mine kind of feel like round it off. Now yours is probably going to look totally different and I think that's going to be cool to see how you guys draw that dewlap because that's one of those things as long as you see it there, something there, you'll know what it is but you can kind of change the shape and do what you want which is fun. Now we're going to draw his body shape. I'm going to kind of come down here but I got to stop right there at this leg because this leg is in front or this arm is in front I should say. So we'll draw that. Let's draw that line. Okay. And then we'll only, you don't have to draw the whole oval. You don't have to just do part of it. And then round it off over there. And then round this one off right here. I have mine overlapping because then it feels like it's got his arm squished. If you go like that, if you take your arm and you bend it in half, you'll see if there's little lines. That's what I'm doing right there. So it looks like he's bending his arm. Then I'll go to this corner right here, and this corner. I like it when things match up nicely. So I like to, if I find a corner there, a little point where everything's intersecting, everything's going to the same spot, I like to use that again for another line. Okay, and now his little toes, remember our little L's? Got one L, two L, three L, and then a little L in the back. So one, two, three, little L in the back. All right, he's looking like an iguana. All right, so let's do this. We'll match that up back there, and then we'll do, again, we don't have to draw the whole oval. Let's just start right there, and then we'll bring this back right there. Now I'm gonna stop it right here, that way I can draw the feet. So just that half part, just like a little backward C, letter C. And then we'll take this part of the leg, this is where it's bent over again. Like I said, if you like bend your arm, you'll see that little line right there. And that's his back leg. All right, now we gotta put his little feet on. His long toes. You can, let's do one, two, three. Big long toes. All right, I have to stop because I have to tell you one really, really cool fact about iguanas. On the top of their head, did you know that they have a third eye? I had no clue, it's called a parietal eye. Basically what that does, it doesn't look like a normal eye. It's really, really small, and it doesn't see like another eye. Basically all I can see is light and dark. So it's really good actually for them. They have it there because when they're on the ground, it's hard if they just had their just two eyes and they didn't have that one on top of their head, 
it'd be really hard to see shadows of birds that would come down and try to eat them. So that little eye up there tells them if there's a shadow above them that they gotta run and get away. How cool is that? I thought that was pretty awesome. Three eyes. That is something I did not expect to learn when I was getting ready to draw an iguana. Some other reptiles have three eyes as well, that parietal eye. It's kind of cool. You'll have to look it up and see. Have your parents help you look it up and find out what other animals, what other reptiles have three eyes. All right, we got the big, long, sweeping tail. He's got his big legs. Now the spikes. We got to draw the spikes on the back of the head. Now this is fun. You can do all sorts of fun ways of drawing the spikes. I'm excited to see what you all come up with. I'm gonna kind of draw some big long spikes. Those are other, the spikes there too, for you know something's trying to attack it. It's not gonna be very fun trying to dive in and jump on its back and get caught up all in its big long spikes. So I think we're close. Let's add a few more little tiny details in here before we go to color and erase all the the pencil. Right here there's little scales. Now this is just stuff that you can do that's really fun. You can add little uh, stripes, you can add, and you can do this with their coloring or you can just do the little stripes on it with uh, your pen, whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna add a few little scales because they have kind of these little scales under their neck, which are pretty cool. I'm gonna add a few scales. Maybe I'll add a few little dots little spots. Then they have some, a lot of them have stripes. Well, we, we actually, I'm gonna draw stripes on their tail too. They got big stripes, sometimes over their whole body, depending on the iguana. Now you can decide whatever color this iguana is gonna be. They got lots of different colored iguanas. They have green iguanas, they have brown iguanas, they have orange iguanas, all kinds. So you can have a lot of fun when you're coloring this. Now let's draw some stripes over here. I'm not gonna fill them in because I think I wanna fill them in with really fun colors. Draw the big old stripes. There we are, we got our iguana. Okay, now I need to take a moment and you can do the same. Let's take one moment and erase all of the pencils that were ready to color. There we are, it looks so much nicer without all the pencil marks. It feels nice and clean and ready to color. How did yours turn out by the way? Was this kind of hard to do? If it was, props to you for doing it because this was kind of hard for me to do so I'm glad that you tried it. Now if you did it and you just knocked it out of the park, you know you knocked it out of the park, awesome. And if you think that you could have done better, that's totally fine, that's what art is. We gotta just try and try again and maybe you draw it again. Maybe you try it again or you just think that's just your style. Maybe yours looks different. I hope yours looks different than mine because you have your own unique style and that's pretty brave of you to be able to do that and be okay with it. Be okay with how yours is gonna look even if it's different than everybody else's. So, and the cool thing about iguanas is they come in all shapes and sizes and different colors just like people. So whatever you drew, it's an iguana and I'm really excited that you did it with me. Okay, let's put some color down. I don't know what you guys are using. Like I said, I'm gonna use some markers. I love using my big bag of markers. And uh, I'm gonna take this time to do some coloring while you do yours and uh, we'll catch up at the end. Boy, I would use so many different colors. That was that was a lot of fun. I do get a little carried away with the colors. How did yours turn out? Did you have a lot of fun doing it? Man, I really wanna see what yours looks like. Make sure your parents post it on Instagram and then tag us at Brave Kids Art Club so I can see it too. I really wanna see what you made. Oh, and before I let you go, I wanna leave you with one last cool iguana fact that you may not know. 
Iguanas are really, really good swimmers. They got that big long tail and it whips them around and they can swim really fast, but also they can hold their breath up to like 30 minutes. I thought that was pretty neat. Well, I hope you guys had a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun for me. It always is the highlight of my day to be drawing here with you, but always remember to be brave, be creative, and most importantly, be you. All right, I'll see you in the next video.